friends, it's Kenzie. Uh, to, today we're going over Daniel chapter 6. And if you guys haven't read it, go ahead and pause, exit out, put a hold on this, and go read Daniel chapter 6. I'll wait. Okay, great. Now that you're all done, I'm just going to do a quick summary of what you've just read. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you guys have read or heard of Daniel chapter 6 before, Daniel in the lion's den. And this is a super cool story and something that I love about the Bible, something that I love about the Word of God is that it's living and active and yeah, the Spirit really uses it to teach us and even if we've read or heard a story before, um, we can learn new things from it. And so I've learned and noticed different things this time reading through and so I hope and pray that you guys have gotten new insight from it too. Um, and so yeah, quick summary. We start off with a new king, King Darius. We read in the last chapter, end of chapter 5, yeah, end of chapter 5, sorry, um, that King Belshazzar had died. And so King Darius is the new king. And one of the first things that he does is he places leadership across the kingdom. And so he has 120 providential officials kind of scattered around and they're in charge of different locations. And then he puts three leaders in charge of those 120 people. So it's kind of like 120 people and then three people overseeing them and then the king. Um, and so within the three leaders is Daniel. Daniel's one of them. And he very quickly became distinguished above all the other leaders. And it said that he was distinguished because of his excellent spirit. He has an excellent spirit um, of leadership and just as a man. And I'm sure that we can assume that it's because he had the Lord on his side. Um, and so, yeah, because of his distinguished leadership, the king was wanting to put him above the entire kingdom. And so obviously the other leaders that were overseeing different places, they didn't like that because they wanted to be distinguished and high above everything else. And so they wanted to find a fault in Daniel either a fault in his leadership or his character, just something to allow the king to be like, hey, maybe Daniel isn't the best guy for this job. And so they were like really trying to find fault in Daniel, but no matter how hard they tried, no matter how hard they looked, they couldn't find any fault in him. And so they decided that if they were to find a fault, they had to make something go against the law of God, the law of God, because they knew that Daniel was going to continually obey that law. And so they somehow convinced King Darius to put a decree in place that for 30 days, nobody in this kingdom could worship any other god, any other man, any other thing but the king, but King Darius. And so they convinced King Darius to do that. He signed that law. Um, and right as Daniel heard that the king signed that law, he went back to his room and he stood by the windows which overlooked Jerusalem and he worshiped um, God. He worshiped the God that he served. And so um, from the time that King Darius signed that decree to the time that Daniel worshiped, Daniel saw that nothing changed. He, he still worshiped God. And so for every single day, three times a day, he would go to that window that overlooked the city and he would worship, he would pray, he would fast. Um, and obviously the guys who had this law passed by the king they knew that Daniel was going to continue to serve God and so they went to Darius and they're like hey this guy Daniel he's still worshiping God that goes against this law that you just signed and so you said that whoever broke this law would be thrown in the den of lions and so like Daniel needs to be thrown in and so the king really really tried to find a loophole and a way out for Daniel not to be thrown in because the king really liked Daniel he found favor in him and so he tried to find any way out but he it says that it could um that the king couldn't even change it um they couldn't change the law after it was signed and so for 30 days they couldn't do anything and so the king brought Daniel in and he He's like, all right, we need to throw you in the lion's den. So he took him to the lion's den. He, he cast him down and kind of the last thing that he said to Daniel was, may your God whom you serve continually deliver you. And so as Daniel was being thrown into this den of hungry lions, the king's like, man, like I hope and I pray that 
this God that you serve and worship is going to rescue you. And so they closed off the lion's den. They, they left. It was nighttime. So the, the king went back to his palace and he prayed and fasted all night for Daniel's safety. Uh, it says that he couldn't go to sleep. And so he, he spent the night praying for him. And so he, the morning came. He, the, the king quickly went to the lion's den. He opened up the seal and he's like, Daniel, like, did your God save you? Are, are you alive? And can you imagine? Daniel was like, yeah, like, I'm good. God delivered me. He found me blameless. Um, and no harm has been done to me. And the king, it says that the king was exceedingly glad. Um, and so they, they brought Daniel out. Can you imagine that celebration? Um, this man that should have been dead um, is alive. And the king said that, okay, everybody's going to serve this God that saved Daniel. Um, and he ended up sending everybody, all the officials that had convinced him to sign that decree, all of those guys, all of their families, their wives and children and everybody, he threw them in the lion's den. And almost immediately, I think immediately, um, it says that the lions overpowered them and devoured them and tore, tore their bones apart. Um, and so, yeah, just that is so obvious that the Lord saved Daniel in powerful ways. And so, yeah, it's something that's really cool is um, what the what the king said after he threw those guys in. That he said he he wrote like a new decree that everybody's to serve the God of Daniel. Um, and it says because he for he is a living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall never be an end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So yeah, guys, that is the same God that we serve today. We serve the God that um, rescues and delivers and he works signs and wonders. And that doesn't stop. He doesn't change. And so that's the God that we serve today. And so this story is a story of God's faithfulness, of how he saves his people, but it's also a story about faithfulness from Daniel. And so I think that we can really learn of Daniel's faithfulness. And one of the biggest things that stood out to me was at the beginning when the other officials were trying to find fault in Daniel. It says that they couldn't find fault because of Daniel's faithfulness. And can you imagine if somebody was to find, try to find fault in us? How cool would it be if they could say that they couldn't find any fault in us because of our faithfulness to the Lord. Um, I know for me, they would be able to find fault in me and I'm sure that they'd be able to find fault in you because we're all sinful people. But um, yeah, I was really encouraged by Daniel that we need to be striving to be a faithful people. We need to be striving to be somebody and a church um, that nobody can find fault in. Um, and so, yeah, that's my prayer for you guys. And um, just my prayer, too, in the midst of this unknown um, is in verse 27, is that he, God, delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. And like I said, this is the same God that we serve today. And so know that God has all power and authority, that Jesus has died already. He rose from the dead already. Victory's already won. And so no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're experiencing, no matter what fear, no matter what anxiety or worry, that that's already paid for. And so cast your anxieties to the Lord, knowing that he's faithful and that he will deliver you. And it might not be how you look, how you want it to look or how you expect it to look, but he is faithful to deliver. And so know that. Um, and so, yeah, I hope that chapter six was a blessing for you guys. I hope that Daniel so far has been a blessing for you. We're halfway done. There's 12 chapters in Daniel. And so, yeah, I'm praying for you guys as um, we're continuing to discover in Daniel what that looks like, that you are convicted of how to be a more faithful faithful follower of Jesus, um, but also just see more and more of who God is. Um, so, yeah, I love you guys. We love you guys. Know that we're praying for you. Know that we're here for you. Um, and we cannot wait to see you guys face to face again very soon. Bye guys.